Now back to young Ginger Sheldon. He kept looking out the window and thinking how much more fun it would be to be outside playing baseball or some other game. Like Call of Duty or Quidditch or Racco. I heard him mumble to him, which I didn't have to do arithmetic. What kind of Sunday school class are you running here anyway? Well, I couldn't let him go on feeling that way, so I decided to teach him a different kind of lesson. I gave him a Briggs-Myers test. Without a sound, I made myself appear on his desk. Androgynous puppet Lucille Ball, my old nemesis. He certainly was surprised. The horror. He wanted to know who I was. Get thee behind me were his exact words. I told him that my name was Johnny Numbers. Johnny? And that I had magic powers. I could even make numbers disappear. See you in hell, Twelve! Bob said that if he had that kind of magic, he'd do away with all numbers. Except 420 and 69. I to do that for him. He wouldn't see any more numbers all that day. I blinded him with a spork. Without disturbing any of the others, we left the classroom. You never saw anyone as happy as Bob was when we got outside school. School's awful quiet on Rosh Hashanah. First, we just walked around a while. It was a wonderful day. Unless you're a filthy integer. Then, Bob saw some boys playing baseball in a field. He suggested that we watch them for a while. I thought that would be fun, too. So we stopped and watched the game. Tickets were 80 bucks, and pretzels cost $15, and our team lost to the end. Suddenly, there was an argument about the score. The boys tried to settle it by looking at the scoreboard. That's when I made all the numbers disappear. Yay, now we can just have and fun. the boys couldn't settle their argument. In fact, they decided they couldn't finish the game because a baseball game without keeping score isn't much fun. And you can't keep score without numbers. Yep, I get it. Bob was disappointed, but I told him that I had to keep my promise of no numbers today. We had to cancel our lunch at Five Guys. Bob suggested that we look in the window of his favorite store. It was always full of trains and other things he liked. Like uh, trains and, well, pretty much trains, okay? I wondered if he had enough money saved to buy a train that was on sale. But I had to make the prices disappear before he could figure it out. Without numbers, of course, you can't show prices. (laughs) That means it's free. (laughs) Well, believe me, being without numbers wasn't exactly what Bob thought it would be. We talked about other things that we could do. You could take your act on the road. Bob said that there were many things to play with in his house, so... That's where we went. But let me tell you something. I don't think that Bob was having as much fun as he thought he would have. I'd confronted Bob with existential quandaries his prepubescent mind was not prepared to engage, and he became depressed and anxious as reality began to unravel. Because Bob kept most of his things in the basement, we went down there first. What does first mean if there's no numbers? I watch him while he planned a new track for his train. Well, the first thing he thought that he should do would be to find out how much new track he would need. He said he was going to measure to find out. Bob, you're playing right into her mind games. <laughs> I had to laugh when he said that. I knew that yardsticks needed numbers, and if he wasn't going to have any numbers that day, he couldn't have any yardsticks either. Oops, him burp. Oh, and I'm making wood disappear now, too. It's an unrelated thing. The yardstick disappear, Bob knew that things weren't the way he thought they would be without numbers. He was disappointed. And now so are you. I agreed that numbers helped us a great deal. But I suggested that we try to get along without them for the rest of the day the way we had planned to do. Bob asked me if maybe I didn't have somewhere else I needed to be. Bob wondered what time it was. But when he looked at the clock to find out, I just had to make the numbers disappear. Congratulations, you invented designer clocks. He thought that a game of shuffleboard would be fun. Oh, Bob. He asked me if I'd like to play. I said, sure, but can we? We'll need numbers, and today, remember, we're not going to have any numbers. Well, this comes out of left field. (laughs) Yeah, how's he going to know if he scored or not? Come on. And Bob asked me if there was anything we could do without numbers. I told him that there were many things. Like spelling antelope. Before I could suggest something, he said that he wanted to listen to the radio. But... And I had to make them go away before I could even find the station he wanted. Try KBBL. When that happened, Bob almost became angry. I really believe that he was sorry for making his wish about numbers, but he didn't say so. Hey, on the bright side, no more Blink-182. Instead, decided to telephone his aunt. His mother was visiting her. 
He knew that his mother would want to know that he was at home. It's TMI, but okay. He found out that even telephoning depends on numbers. Things just seemed to go from bad to worse for him. I'd really broken him, psychologically. Ah, who cares? Numbers still suck. Bob thought that we had better... Whoa! Whoa.